Welcome back to Bite Size Booksmith. My name is Angie, and on this channel, we navigate the intersection of the latest AI technologies and the art of writing fiction. Our video today is the result of several requests from viewers of this video, Mastering Right to Market. We looked at several ways to choose the categories and keywords for your books or series. In this video, I used a couple different tools, including Katie Spy, Publisher Rocket, and I also talked about Kalytics. While these are a great investment if you're planning to write and publish professionally, they can be expensive if you're just getting started. So today we're gonna to go through this process using only Amazon's website, as well as some free tools. As usual, I've created a document here in Notion that will guide you through the process of doing your own category and keyword analysis. I've also included some suggestions and resources that will help you to dig deeper into the topic. You'll find the URL for that in the video description below. I've also included timestamps to help you get back to the parts that you want to rewatch. Now we'll go over a couple items in this document before we dive into the step-by-step -step process and note that I'm a little rusty in doing this manually. So we're going to take it slow. Okay. So here we are in the notion document and you'll see the original video here, as well as some of the tools that I created and that I provided links to for that original video. I did create some resources for this video, actually. So I've got a right to market spreadsheet. It's blank. You'll be able to make a copy of this and use it to your heart's content. There is a section here for category research, keyword research, as well as competition. As we go, I'm going to be putting together this right to market example. So I'll be putting stuff in this spreadsheet as I am working through this process with you. So back here, so that's these two here. So when ideally should you use this process of doing your category and your keyword analysis? I'm of the mind of you pick where your book is gonna fit and then you write your book. That's what right to market is at you know its core. It's looking at the market and seeing where the opportunities are and then creating a book that will fit in that. There's pros and cons of that. What if you're not passionate about it? What if it's not something that you're interested in? Then by all means, write what you're interested in. But it's a way of making sure that people are going to buy your book before you even start. Now, if you have already started writing your book, if you finished your book and you're trying to determine your categories and keywords, you can still use the same exact process. You're just going to already have a bit more information than those of us that are just getting started. Okay, so moving on down, here are some recommendations. So you're going to want to get a copy of DS Amazon Quick View. It is a Chrome plugin. There is a free version. I have never paid for this. I love it. It allows me, so when I'm on the bestseller list, to be able to see what the rank of specific books are at any given time. It makes it really easy for you to be able to see what the book number one and book number 50 are, which is part of this process, without having to click in there and scroll. It just makes this, the process much simpler. And then also, I recommend using a different Chrome profile. I don't recommend using a incognito window. You can. The only reason I don't use incognito window is because then I can't use my Amazon Quick View for some reason. So I have a specific Chrome profile that I use for Amazon research and I just clear my history before I get started. You want to make sure that you, you don't influence Amazon in any way by having cookies or search history in there. So we're going to go ahead and move over to Amazon and we're going to get started with category analysis. Okay, here I am in my other profile. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to Amazon. We're going to write to amazon.com and you can see that I am not logged in. I'm actually going to refresh this because it's a little wonky. There we go. And first place we're going to go is we're going to go to the bestseller list because I want to see what the ranks of book one and book 50 are in some categories and kind of determine where I want to position my book. Now, Normally I would click the button for Katie Spy and it would take me right to that list. So I have to do it the hard way. 
And the way that I usually get there is I'll come, I'll go to a book that I know is on the bestseller list, and I will click on their bestseller ranking, and it'll then take me to the Amazon bestsellers. Okay. This one actually put me, I clicked the wrong one. I should have clicked the one for Kindle store, but now we're back. So within the Kindle store, I want to come to Kindle eBooks. Okay. Now I was thinking, why don't we think about doing a young adult novel? Let's come here to teen and young adult. And you can see that plugin I was talking about, the DS Quick View. It's showing us right here what the bestseller rank is on these books as we look at them. So you don't want to put your book into a high level category. You want to go as far and as deep as you can in the areas that make sense for it, because then you have a better chance of ranking higher in those categories. Sure, you're still technically in the teen and young adult category, but then you actually have the opportunity to be a bestseller in something else. So let's come down here to science fiction and fantasy. And we'll look. So this has got a rank of 59. For someone who is just starting out, who doesn't have any other books out, a rank of 59 is way too competitive for you to compete unless you have a lot of backing, a lot of ARC readers, and you've got a lot of people on your launch team, you're probably not going to get anywhere close to 59. Okay, so let's come here to fantasy. Okay, and we'll see that we've still got a rank here of 59, but let's keep digging deeper. So why don't we come here to paranormal and urban? Ha, huh, rank 59. Okay. So why don't we click on these three and see what we have to work with? Under mermaids? Wow. 28,798. This is definitely one of those categories where you could very easily, once you launch, become a bestseller. It also means this rank here means that there's not a lot of traffic in this subcategory. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to get seen. And there's maybe not as much interest. But as long as we put our books in maybe one of these kind of categories and then a couple other ones that have a bit more traction, then we can definitely work with that. Let's go ahead and click on vampires. Now, this series has been out for quite a while, 547. Yeah, this would be a little bit difficult to rank in. And then come down here to Werewolves and Shifters. Now, this one, 1374. This one would actually be better than the vampires. The, you, you want to remember, the lower the book rank is, the harder to compete with it that it is. So this will be if you wanted to have either a werewolf or a shifter. In addition to your mermaid, then this could be a good place to put it. You won't maybe not get book bestseller number one, but you could definitely rank in this category. Okay, let's go on. When I am filling out my spreadsheet, I want to look at the rank of book one. So I would put that on my list. And then I want to look at book rank number 50. Okay. And we're just waiting on it to load. Okay. Yeah. This is definitely a category where I launch a book in here. I've got a pretty good chance of being, or a really good chance of being a bestseller in this category. Now, I wouldn't necessarily put something in Werewolves and Shifters and put something in Mermaids because I want to spread myself out so I have a little bit more footing. So let's go and look, come back here to fantasy. We can put ourselves into fairy tales and folklore. And there's a couple items here. So maybe royalty. Let's look at that. Okay. So the selection, it's almost at 2000. So this could be a possible place where I could put my book and then 
I could try to become number one in the fairy tales and folklore royalty, royal fairy tales and folklore. Jeez, could they come up with anything more of a tongue twister? As well as the fairy tales and folklore uh, category, which would be much more difficult to compete in because this is 764. Okay, so let's come back up here and let's go to mysteries and thrillers. So again, we're still under teen and young adult, but let's look at fantasy and supernatural. So these are fantasy and supernatural mysteries. We've got a book rank of 522 here. Might not beat this one, but look at book number two. It's 4,385. So we have the ability to rank a little bit higher in this category than maybe some of the others. Might not get book bestseller number one, but this one has quite a bit more people coming to it and people who are interested in it. And we can tell that by the book ranks. Okay. So to determine the sales rank analysis, we've looked at book one and we've looked at book number 50. We've put them on our list. So other things that you can look at while you're here are take a look at the covers. What do you see in the covers? Is there specific colors that are prevalent? Font styles? Are you seeing more serif fonts or sans serif fonts? Are you seeing all caps or are you seeing a mixture of capital and lowercase letters? Also, if you see some books that are similar to your own, you can go ahead and add them to that competition list and look at and do a bit more of an analysis of where are they selling their book? Are they in KU? What is the price that they are offering? Additionally, you can see what point of view your books are in by just coming here to a book. You can hit read sample. And scroll. And okay, so this is in first person. A lot of people in young adult like to write in first person. There are some people that hate first person and only want to write in third person. It just depends on the category, and that can help you make that decision. Also, in the samples, you can see how many chapters are in a book. Come down here and look at the length. How long is the book? Also, how many reviews does it have? And are they mostly good reviews? You can even come down here as we scroll and take a look and see what are people love about the book? What do they not like about the book? So let's go ahead and we're going to move on to doing our analysis of the last 30 days. Okay. Once. So in addition to the bestseller list, there's also what's called a hot new release. So then you would come up and you'd be here under the new releases tab. The best way that I've found to figure out this information is to come up here to categories and select your top category. And then let's come down here. So I'm actually going to, I did this yesterday. I completely recorded this video yesterday, realized I missed a couple things and decided to completely do it from, from scratch. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I did yesterday because it was a little bit of a hot mess. So, okay, now I'm in mysteries and thrillers. I'm going to come down here to fantasy and supernatural. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here. I am in fantasy. And I want to open up Paranormal and Urban and then Fantasy, Tales, and Folklore. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm opening each of these to the categories that I'm interested in. So for mermaids, there is a total of 680 results for mermaids. But how many have been published in the last 30 days? How much traffic are we really seeing on this category? So. If you come here to last 30 days, we can see that there are only six results in this teen and young adult mermaid category. 
What does that mean? That means you have a very good option of being listed as a hot new release in the teen and young adult mermaid category. Also means that there is not a lot of people publishing because there's probably not a lot of interest. But again, we selected this category because we've almost got a guarantee of having a bestseller. Okay, so now we're in teen and young adult fairy tales and royalty. So there are 9,000 results for royalty. And let's see how many were published in the last 30 days. Okay, so 850 results. So there's been 850 books published in this category in the last 30 days. So it's going to be much more difficult to become a hot new release in this category. <clears throat> and finally, we have the fantasy and supernatural mystery category. Now there's over 10,000 results in this category. So this is a much bigger category. It's going to be harder to get that hot new release. Let's go ahead and look at the last 30 days. Oh, look, there's only 258 results in this one, whereas there was a lot more in the other one. So 258 results. It's going to be a little bit easier to become a hot new release in this category. Okay, so you're going to want to go in and add these numbers for the results into your spreadsheet. Add any notes that you want to add. And then we're going to move on to keyword analysis. Okay, so if you are starting your journey of trying to determine what keywords you want to use for your book and you have absolutely no idea, the best place that I like to start is either using ChatGPT or using Claude. So I actually made a little prompt and I'm going to paste it in here. I am a, I'm going to change this slightly, young adult urban fantasy author who's writing a book with a siren mermaid protagonist. The story is set in a modern urban fantasy world, much like our own. There are elements of romance, mystery, and suspense. My ideal readers are females age 16 to 24. The tropes that I've included are royalty, mythological creatures, and the Greek pantheon. And then I want to say, please suggest 20 possible Amazon keywords for my book. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and send it. And it's going to give me a list of keywords. And we're going to use these as a starting point. You also can ask, are there more? And it can give you possibly more. But I'm just going to start with the 20. Okay, here we are back on Amazon. And you'll notice that I have changed the search parameters to search just for the Kindle store. Now, if you are doing a print book, you could do the book store as well. But we're going to keep it uh, down to uh, the Kindles for now. And I've gone ahead and grabbed the first keyword. So I see Siren Novel. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it's been a little weird. So let me try to refresh. I just cleared everything out a second ago. So that's why. And so you can see that for this first result, I have 303 results for the first keyword. So 303. I put that into my spreadsheet. And then I also want to know the rank of my first book here. So this one is 10,300. And 89. So I went ahead and put that also into my spreadsheet. So I want to see if there are any other keywords that are related to this one. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the word novel and see if anything else comes up. Nothing else popped up. And let me go ahead and try getting rid of the word siren, see what else. So it brought up urban fantasy romance, urban fantasy complete, urban fantasy mystery. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that for now. Urban fantasy is a very large category, so I'm probably not going to use that as a keyword. So let's go ahead and come down here to the next one on the list, young adult mermaid romance. Go ahead and pop that in here. Now you'll see when I put that in there, it also brought up mermaid romance for young adults. So let's go ahead and click on that. 
That's a recommended search term. So there are over a thousand results for mermaid romance books for young adults. I'm going to go ahead and put that onto my spreadsheet. I'm going to put my thousand results. And the book. So we've got a, a bestseller ranking here of 9,594. So I went ahead and added that to my spreadsheet as well. And I'm going to go back and go to the original Young Adult Mermaid Romance, put that in there, hit enter. Okay, so it also has over a thousand results. And it also has the first ranking as the same one as last time. So let's go ahead. We're going to move on to modern mythological fantasy. Let's go ahead and pop that in there. Okay, it didn't give any other suggestions. So let's go ahead and look here. Over a thousand results. And oh, wow. This one is in the millions. 1,424,520. So modern mythological fantasy. So give me one second. We're going to hop over in to look at this in a different way. And I'll be right back with you. So just like Google is a search engine, Amazon is too. So why not go to the biggest search engine and see how many people are searching for your keywords? So that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to come here to Google AdWords. And we are going to use their free keyword planner. So the easiest way that I've found to find it is to just type in Google AdWords keyword tool and then click on the link. I will go to keyword planner. Okay. You can hide that. I don't use Google AdWords. Okay. So you have the option of discovering new keywords by using this tool on this side. But what we're going to do is we want to look at the search volume and the forecast for our possible keywords for this book. So I'm going to go to the spreadsheet. I'm going to grab the list and I'm going to hit get started. Okay. So now we can see now one thing I've noticed is they are actually in alpha, uh, alphabetical order. So what you can do is you can actually go to your list and put it in alphabetical order. And that way you're looking at the same thing. It's easier to find instead of pecking and hunting. But here we go. Mermaid and human love story. Average monthly searches on Google is 10 to 100. And we've got a competition of low. So I'll come over to the spreadsheet and I'm going to add that in the second two columns, the average monthly searches and the competition, because those are for our Google information. Okay, got to find that now. Okay, found it. So 10 to 100 and low. Okay, what else do we have? Nothing. That's strange. I actually did this yesterday and there was a couple. So Greek myth retelling. 100 to 1,000. Now, competition on this one was high, and more than likely it's because of Percy Jackson. Mythological creatures, 10,000 to, to 100,000. Now, this one had a competition of low, and so this would be mythological creatures would potentially be a good keyword for you. It's got a uh, good enough search volume, but it's the competition isn't crazy. But I would definitely check that in Amazon first. New adult urban fantasy, 10 to 100 searches, but it's also got a competition of high. And then siren love story, 10 to 100 searches, and it's got a competition of low. And down here, young adult mermaid books, 10 to 100 searches, and again, competition of high. Let's go back to the Notion document and look at some of my suggestions. We've covered a couple of these already. Here's my advice for choosing your categories and your keywords. So again, I like to choose subcategories in either two of the major Amazon categories or at least two different places within the Amazon category. So like I had one, it was a mystery. I also had a category that was in, or actually had two categories 
within the section on urban fantasy and paranormal. I also like to pick at least one category that I know can rank as a bestseller. That's something that's important to me. So I make sure to choose something that I can do that in. I'm looking when I do a book launch to be anywhere in the rank of maybe 2,000 to 5,000 for my bestseller rank. And let's look at the book sales calculator from Kindlepreneur. And so in the Amazon marketplace right now, to hit a rank of 2,000, you have to sell 90 books in a day. So that gives you an idea of what you need to strive for and how big of a deal it needs to be. So if you're trying to hit 5,000, you only need to do 34 books in a day. So you can definitely change your targets that what you want to hit. You can do a little bit higher as long as you have a, a category that can accommodate that. But between your launch team, your ARC readers, and your email list, you're definitely looking to hit a specific target to be able to hit your bestseller or that hot new release. I also want to make sure that you don't have to keep your book in the same categories forever. If you see that one really isn't doing you any favors, you can absolutely change it at any time. It might take a little while for it to catch up. It, you can definitely change your categories. And then when choosing your keywords, I'd like to pick a combination of high volume and low volume keywords just to have the specificity of the low volume keyword, but also to have the traffic of a high volume keyword. If you go in and search on Google, you will find Amazon books that come up and it, they'll actually recommend you some Amazon books. Also see if you can find one that has maybe a little bit of Google presence as well. So I've given you some additional resources down here for you to go through, but I think that's it for today. So we've gone through, we've done the category analysis, we've done the keyword analysis, and we've talked about how to choose which keywords and categories for your book. Have you done this before? Is this a process that you've gone through before? Have you written to market in the past? I'd love to hear about what you have done, what you're interested in doing as well. So let's wrap for today. And you guys have an amazing day. Have an amazing weekend. And I'll talk to you guys again soon.